Python? Things have not gone as planned. Python! Perhaps you can aid me in locating Hytham. What is your purpose with him? I have brought a sampling of goods from Ireland. That is, if I can bring my ships to dock. Azar! I see you've met Eivor Wolfkist. Ah, so you are Eivor. In fact, I bring you a message from Ireland. I know no one in Ireland. The letter is from Dublin's king. Sadly, I seem to have misplaced it. The King of Dublin? Why would such a one write to me? He wishes to expand trade to England. The purpose of my bringing goods here. Azar is from the East, but lives in Ireland now. But in matters of trade, Azar, your king should petition Ranvi. He claims to know Eivor. He asked me to accompany you on the trip there. I know no king, and I'm certainly not about to journey to Ireland. But first, Azar, you must build a trading post. In fact, where is your trade ship? Ah, oh, yes. An unfortunate incident most concerning. Trading rivals have blocked the river and thus my goods. A blocked river hurts all Ravensthorpe. Stay, I'll put things right. As you see, Eivor is a person of action. Find me later, when the river is safely clear. Of course, my friend. I thank you, Eivor. I will find the king's letter in the meantime. You keep insisting that I know an Irish king. It is a fantasy. What manner of king is it that sends me letters from Ireland? Let's go. Can't raise the sail yet. Sing us a song. Who'll share a tale? More sail! During my 19th winter, King Styrbjorn ordered the construction of a new longhouse. The splendid hall you now see at Thornburg. To build this longhouse, he employed the help of 20 men. I was among them, as was Fradi, the strongest and stoutest man I had ever seen. We set about felling trees and hewing wood for timber. Fradi was the fastest of us, dropping 41 trees in only two days. On the third day, a spindly man called Nar was near upon felling his first tree. He had hacked it all the way around like some mad animal. When the tree fell, it did so in a direction he had not wished. Straight down upon Fradi. Nar called out, but it was too late. Fradi had only enough time to turn and face the doom bearing down upon him. With that, he raised his arms to embrace the timber hammer. The force of the trees falling drove Fradi deep into the snowbank, yet his arms never let go. He held that angry trunk as a lover. Like hounds, we scooped at the snow to reach him. We found Fradi ten feet down, alive but in pain, still bearing the tree upon his shoulder. Let's hear a story. When we arrived here, we thought the fighting was the hard part. But we were wrong. Getting the Saxons to accept their conquerors, that was the challenge. We pillaged and burned did what we do best. Soon their resistance waned, and they surrendered to Father. In his wisdom, Father sought not to rule by fear. He bid the locals show us their way of life. He accepted them and theirs, their ways, their culture, their God. Not all our people saw eye to eye with Father, and some made their displeasure known. 
challenged the Jarl. Oftentimes, Father quelled the unrest with reason, but sometimes the square was drawn and the blood of kinsmen was spilled. I once asked him why he would kill his own over the lives of these Saxons. He would only say, there are no Norse or Saxons here, son. Not anymore. Not if we want to survive the ages to come. Ah, uh, here's the blockade to be cleared. We beat the raven this day! <laughs> After Stirmar. Fortifications there, Ivor.
back to the ship! Azar's trading rivals are defeated. The river is clear. Now we'll see about this so-called King of Dublin. Azar, the river is clear, save for a few bodies and sticks. Your goods will get through. Your reputation comes honestly then, though I am not sure about the name Wolfkist. The scar on my neck. Ah. My Viking name would then be Azar One-Eye. Thank you, Azar One-Eye. My men will help construct your trade post. Then I am twice debted to you. If ever you change your mind about Ireland, I will be found in the trade post, once built. Oh, and I found your letter. Here. My cousin Barith is alive, and King of Dublin. The Nornian never failed to delight. Eivor, are you prepared to go to Ireland? Azar, you did not tell me the King was my cousin. It was most amusing this way, was it not? A little mystery. I prefer to know what is what. But it was a pleasant surprise. He's eager to see you. Shall we set sail? Yeah, I would like to see this land. And my cousin Barith. Ireland, a patchwork of petty kings jostling for hills and pastures and green, green glens. My adopted isle. Azar, how is it that Barith, as nose as ice, is king of Dublin? Dublin is a Viking city, Eivor. 
but in fact, merchants and beggars come from all parts to parade in its muddy streets. Odd to think of Barith as king of a city. It perhaps sounds grander than it is. Ireland has many, many kings. They litter the countryside, and Barith's throne is not secure. Flan Shinna calls the tune. Who is he? Soon to be crowned High King of all Ireland. Flan distrusts Vikings, though he needs them. Barith will find a way. As a boy, he wasn't much of a fighter, but somehow always came out all right. I'm sure what you say is true. Certainly, he is loved by his people. Your crew can find lodging here. Come, let us find Barith. Eivor! Blood of my blood! Look at you! You have on Thrusta's cheekbones! <laughs> and you, the seven-year-old, lives in you still. It has been a long stretch since we pelted old Ganfrid with apple cores. <laughs> he never forgave us that. And Sigurd in the clan? How goes with all? There is much to tell you, Barith. But let me breathe your Irish air. Thank you for keeping my ports from being set ablaze in my absence. My ports? Yes, old man. I can rule my city even without you here. Eivor, you arrive in good time. I'm hosting a feast in honor of my son, Sifrith. He is 17 today. A 17-year-old son? And rather a difficult boy at that. Come, there's much to show on the way to my castle. A kingship, a son, and a castle. Truly, you have a fine life, Bahar. Castle? It is a wooden house. Finely crafted, to be sure, but in Shiraz, it would be home to a middling rug merchant. Lead me to your rock merchant's wooden hovel, Barith. <clears throat> Just look at her docks! Wee babe of a city, but the biggest port in all Ireland. You cannot appreciate Aid me. Be my eyes. During the stench of our docks. It is upon the strength of this port I plan to secure my kingship. The Tsar told me that your throne may not be entirely steady. King Flan needs some persuading, is all. Dublin's vast trade web will bring wealth to all Ireland. If Flan can be made to see that, my kingship and that of my children's children will be safe. I cannot guarantee your throne, but a vast trading web is within my power. No one else I'd trust my commerce to, old man. You let them call you that. I call him worse things. Barith, my king! I still owe you a horn of ale. This is where I leave you. Don't miss the banquet. I'll be there shortly. My mousy king. Aoife, this is my cousin, Eivor. Show her the bow I had you make for her. This is for me. The craftsmanship is beautiful. Me best work. Give her a try. Hit the targets before the sand runs out. Think you can get them all? Of course I will. Stand ready to be astonished. Aren't you the confident one? Sure I'll be embarrassed for you if you shat on the eggs. Watch my arrows fly. I certainly will. Go! Ah, 
Damn good shot! It is a very nice bow. Thank you, Barret. Steps off the boat after a long sea voyage and shoots like a master. Well done, cousin. Wait, is that a house of God? Aye, Christ's own church. Ireland is mostly Christian now, and so is Dublin. Many Norse chew the wafer. You make a place for them. Them? I myself have a place in Christ's house, as I do in the house of Thor. So long as a god has my back, he has my altar. I've built this city up from rubble. Twenty years ago, us Vikings were beaten. The Irish took revenge and sacked Dublin. Azar told me that it is a Viking city. Norse founded it, and I nursed it back to health. When I became king, I was king of a mud pit. There, up ahead, my home. <laughs> my only regret is that my mother and my wife aren't here to greet you. They've gone on pilgrimage to the mountains just now. The waters there improve mother's health. I am left to discipline my wayward son. And to host a banquet. Which should be already underway. <laughs> Up, Barrett, for dear! Here we are. Please, go enjoy yourself. I must have a word with my son. Come meet him before the night's out. Hussar, I was not sure if I would see you here. Why is that? I thought you'd rather take stock of your wares than placidly observe caterwauling Vikings. And you... You would rather spend time with this gossiping ganti? I know few people here. And of them, I know you are the one who is always ready with a sweet anecdote. I do have some information you may find interesting. Siegfried's stomach doesn't agree with cheese. Had an accident about it last week. The embarrassing, bed-changing kind. He shat himself. Mortifying for a lad of that age. The kind of thing that would devastate him in front of his comrades. If one needed ammunition. Thank you, Asar. Your company is always enlightening. What do you expect, Father? That I follow your example? The example of a pack mule? <laughs> Hey! Hi! Enjoying yourself? It's great crack. It's a fine thing to celebrate future King Siegfried. I'm curious. How do you feel Barret has done as king? Oh, he's done a lovely job he has. Likes to throw feasts. Invites us common folk. More host than king, perhaps, but he's a fine man and the city has never been busier. Can I ask, what is your life like in this city? Well, there's a fair among the work, isn't there? Hauling crates, shoveling muck. I'm a tanner myself. Long days stripping hides and dousing them in cow piss. You can probably smell the stench. I can. Enjoy the feast, friend. You as well. 
Sigfrid, I expect my son to act like the future king, not roll in the muck. So Flan will take you on as his farting court jester. Think with your head and not your arse. Flan can assure my throne, which will one day be yours. That makes you the arse. Enough! Eivor, my son, Sigfrid. I'm sorry, I... I must clear my head. Could you speak to the boy? I was looking forward to meeting my cousin's son. So, you're the cousin who Da speaks so fondly of. Is the old fool reduced to importing Vikings now? In Norway, you'd be knocked to the ground by now. Come on, then. If you've any guts worth respecting. Fine, whelp. You won't land a single punch. Oh. I guess I owe you thanks for not beating me, bloody. I am not here to quarrel with you, Sigfrith. Da speaks so highly of you. I wanted to see if you lived up to the stories. Does anyone? You're unhappy with how your father rules. Da has the makings of a fine king. He chooses to play the unctuous merchant instead. A visit to Norway might do a young vikinger like you some good. I'd love to go with Da. Maybe the homeland would kindle his warrior spirit. Give Dublin a fair and fearsome king. I've lost track of your father. Any idea where he might be? He wanted to clear his head. That means he's visiting grandfather's grave. Da has a chat with him almost every day. Bareth can commune with the dead. <laughs> no, his conversations are all one-sided. The grave sits at the top of the hill. I'll find him. Thank you, Sigfrid. Eivor! Teach me how to hit like that sometime. What see you, old friend? Show me what lies ahead. 
Barth. Huh. Why so uneasy? <sighs> A king must forever be on guard. When I'm upset or uncertain, I come here to seek my father's spirit. I didn't even ask after him. Somehow I knew he'd... Some years ago, he was destined to die in battle, and he did. He sits with Odin now. My family owes yours a solemn debt. That winter, your family came to stay with us. I remember your birth, screaming like a warrior. The plague year. No one would take us in. No one but your mother and father. I owe your family my life. And what a life we had. I have fond memories of you and I slipping out to hunt. In dead of night. Stars in the sky, moonlight on snow. <laughs> and that's how I got that scar. <laughs> I do feel bad about that. What about the one on your cheek? This. A caution from the gods about my vanity. Come. If we tell all our stories, we'll be here a week. Do you see something? My imagination run amok, but let us away. Oh. Funny how just the slightest noise sets a fellow on edge. By Thor's hammer about it, I could sleep a week. Not as spry as the old days, eh? When we'd search the night in hopes of catching a will-o'-the-wisp. <laughs> Did we catch one? I have a memory of catching one. Give yourself up! What? Back! Grab him! Bind his hands! Who are these men? Damn you bastards! Are they? My ascension to the throne has not been without contest. The previous king's son, Thorstein, is resentful. You told me nothing of this. You are my guest. I am not going to burden you with petty concerns. Petty concerns? I now know why you've been anxious all evening. I... tis worrying. He's never been so bold before. He sees you as a usurper to his throne. Perhaps, but he doesn't seem to want to take it. He contents himself by stealing and smuggling with his band of ruffians. It's petty Viking raiding, but it puts me in a bad light with Flan. That's certain.
Keep a sharp watch. Brigands rove the streets tonight. You can be sure of me, my king. What? You know I am always the last to leave a party. What is wrong? We were ambushed by Thorstein's men. Rivals I was not made aware of. Small wonder King Flan does not embrace you, Barret. You cannot keep control of the Vikings in your own city. Thorstein makes me look like more of an arse than I do on my own. I see. It is the High King's disfavor that makes this shameful. My cousin, I will take care of Thorstein. No, I do not want to drag you into the sorry mess. Perhaps he'll accept silver to lie low. For a week or two. But then he'll be back, and back again. I can remove this blood, once and for all. Eivor, this is not your fight. For any and all of your God's sakes, Barith, let Eivor help you. As of this moment, Barith, my arm is yours. Whatever is needed to bring Flan's smile upon you, I will do. Eivor, I have never been so happy. Your family saved mine those years ago. A fitting reply would be to secure your throne. I will start with Thorstein. It happens that Siegfried may know something. He once ran with Thorstein's gang. Sadly true. Seek him tomorrow in the marketplace. After a night of carousing, he likes to recuperate there. We will begin to forge a bond with High King Flan on Rise of Sun. Sigfrith will be at the marketplace. I need to learn more about Thorstein. Need to get on the other side.
Be my eyes soon. I'll never learn. Morning, Siegfried. Eivor. It was a rough night. I drank too much and I am desperate to calm my belly. I cannot help your belly. But could you tell me what you know of this man Thorstein? Ah. Ta told you I tried to join his gang, eh? Thorstein is a real vikinger. Like you, but louder. You weren't allowed to join. Too young and gangly. Amar wouldn't even show me where his hideout is. Tell me a bit about this Amar. Likes her ale the way kittens like milk. Spends her time getting tiddly on the docks, chatting up passersby. I will speak to her. Perhaps Thorstein will regret not letting you in his gang. Listen to me. If you're smart, you won't cross Amar. She's a vicious fighter. Þorbjörn myndi bera mál úr boga hans. Við glín, brjóta bak hans með kasti. Já, allgott. Ég á kröss undir fórn. What have we here? Hvað hyggir þú? Já, en fyrra var einslegt. Er harpa kemur við sálminn? Nó, Manik! What do you see? Enjoying her ale, likely to be a mom. What are you drinking, friend? The finest ale in town. I like fine things, so you have my attention. What are you doing here, darling? Looking for a good drink and good company. You've stumbled into the right ale house. Excellent ale and better conversation. The ale leads to chatting, leads to... Well, who knows? Ooh, let's find out. We're a bit green, friend.
Is that all you can do? Ooh, you are wicked! You are a compelling woman. What is it you do? You may have heard of Thorstein. I'm one of his most trusted friends. I have heard of him. Very impressive that he trusts you. He's like a brother to me. A not very bright brother. He entrusted me with a key to his secret lair. He has a lair? I would very much like to see that. Over in Dupke Landing? <laughs> Sorry. Thorstein would get all pouty. But perhaps you'd like to join me for a meal. I'd rather join you for something else. <laughs> Can't wait to find out what that is. But hold that thought. I don't feel well. I best move about a bit. Won't be gentle if they spot me. I need to get that key from her. If I'm careful, I can avoid a fight. Sagarmen som gick.
I should be cautious around here. My eyes. Hey, hold on. What this pisses on such cowardice? <laughs> Survey the area, Sunan. What's all this? Stay sharp. Ah. <sighs> 
did you get in here? You made a mistake when you came for Barith, Makiva. Oh, gods! You plan to kill me? Give my head to whatever Irish master you and Barith serve? I serve no Irish master. Borscat! If you had any Norse loyalty, you'd be like me, running the filthy God Eaters from the island. The King of Dublin should look out for Vikings, not try to make nice with those cunts who killed our forebears. Best not to draw attention here. I could use someone with real balls, and the silver is good. Be silent, and I might show you mercy. <laughs> Show me. Have a look, Sunan.
common refuse delivered to your judgment, King Barith. Thorstein, author of the plot to waylay me and my cousin. Well, you know how it is, Barith. A fellow needs some silver. A king could fetch Dublin's treasury in ransom. Although I'm not certain you'd bring in quite so much. Say so, Barith, and I will cut out his insolent tongue. On your feet, Thorstein. You bloody <sighs> my floors. <laughs> it is a weighty decision. I would have my closest friend advise me. Eivor? How shall I deal with this ruffian? All must see that you are a just, resolute king. A stately and dignified execution is called for. Well said, Eivor. I want no blood feud lasting generations, Thorstein. You are not worth the bother. Dublin confiscates your land and silver. I banish you forevermore. Be gone by sundown. Bend the knee and show your thanks. Best to you, King. I've better places to be than Dublin. Father! Why choose weakness? Give every enemy a length of rope. Soon they will carry your noose. Peace. Flanchina will soon rule all Ireland. Flanchina has the power to make or undo my kingship and that of my son. He is the center of all. But Flan distrusts me. He does not believe I'm truly Christian. By showing Christian mercy, I begin to change his mind. You are more shrewd than I took you for, cousin. Maybe Thorstein's release is worth a kingdom, but will mercy be enough? That is why I must build trade. Flan will see that the strength of Dublin's ports is the strength of Ireland. Show him the power of that trade, cousin. Obtain some rare item from afar, some spice or gem or weapon. And gift it to him at the coronation. It will represent Dublin's reach and help secure my crown. Flan will hear of your Christian mercy. Meantime, I will speak to Asara about a gift. Meet me before the coronation. We will go together. Go, Sunan.
I need your eyes, my friend. Stretch your wings, Sunan. Eivor, welcome to my shop. I came to ask a favor. It is pleasant to strengthen friendships. What do you seek? Barith wishes to show Flan the value of Dublin's trade. Could we obtain a gift from a distant land? This is the very problem vexing me. You see, I have acquired land in Rathdown, previously owned by Thorstein, in fact. But the land has gone to Thorn and Dog, smugglers as well. Once cleared, its trading route will serve our heart's desire. In this case, my heart desires an exotic gift, which would be... A spice merchant I know covets pelts of fine fur. Rathdown has an abundance. It is a perfect match. Spice is a gift fit for a king. Thank you, Asar. It is north of here. You go clear it of smugglers while I sit on my ass. No need for thanks. Wrath down is north of Dublin. I should journey there. Off we go. Sail! Catch the wind! Strike of the tune! Reef sail! More sail! You Salskulls got a story. 
Some years ago, I took to sea with a sword dancer called Aeid. A brooding warrior with a face of stone and oak hard arms. On a raid in Courland, we shored up along the edge of a forest and explored until we came to people parts. A large farm. It was night and all were asleep. So we set about plundering the place in the quiet of eve, taking sheep and goats as we pleased. It was then that Eil What do you mom, see, Sunan? Pressed the boy for the family's hidden silver. The farmhand squawked like a crow. Being hid beneath an anvil at the smith's forge, the silver was no trouble to lift. In secret, we took it and the boy back to the ship. Sad, for when the farmers woke with the crack of day, they would know they had been robbed, but not by whom. So Ael ordered three of us to follow him back to the sleep hushed hamlet. As we burnt the houses, Ael shouted his name I am Ael, son of Skatlagrim, and I am the man who deprives you of everything but your life. I never sailed with Ael again. <laughs> This one's mine! Leave down the line! To battle! <laughs> 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 Thanks, Abel.
give me a hand with this! Over here! Cast about this land, my friend. Can't raise the sail yet. Let the sail out! Sing us a song. We need an epic tale. Sail well, out! Well, taught me to care for oaths as if they were my own heart. There is no greater aim than to honor an oath till death. When a foul king strolls into town, an oath means as much as dust. These flimsy oaths, they cost us everything. I like to take oaths in the ancient manner. Do not eat for a day, then cut a sheet of peaty turf from the earth. Then wrap your sword in this oily carpet of dirt and grass, flakes from great Emir's old corpse, and set it aflame. In that way your honor burns bright. It does not dwindle as you speak the old word. With nothing to your name, with nothing to gain or lose. Will you pledge your heart, your family, your raven wife? 
Your honor, your might, and your word to each and each who stands and stood with you like fire and fire. And finally, the dagger. Together, draw blood Take from the grave and the sword earth. Mixed your inner rivers, and you are bound. That is how you make an oat. Today we shake, spit, and trade arm rings. All ceremony is gone. All thunder and spirit. Make for the dark. Gods here are vigilant. <laughs> Smugglers. The Zara needs them cleared away. You're one of Azar's men. I am. Azar tells me you two are interested in furs to trade for a gift. You'll show King Flawn the reach of Barith's trade. We'll get the furs you need. How can I help? With trade post supplies. We'll build up the post for better and faster trade. I got a hold of some trade post supplies. Match! You don't waste time settling in, I see. Ah, yes. These are exactly what we need. Done. We'll send the furs to Dublin. Azar will help you find more posts to capture. Goodbye, friend. Hm. 
Sunen, guide me. Eivor, the first have arrived from Rastan. We can now trade for Flan's gift. Come, check the storage. Azar, you have your trade post. In fact, I have heard from the trader himself. We have furs enough for Flan's gift. Here, my friend, make the trade. Fine spices that cannot be obtained anywhere else. I will see them delivered for the coronation. Flan will certainly grasp the strength of Dublin's trade. Speaking of, Eivor, there are abandoned trade posts across Ireland. You're suggesting I claim them to increase Dublin's reach. We will gain access to goods we could not otherwise obtain. There is great bounty to be had. I will look for opportunities. Meanwhile, I'll find Barrett. He'll be pleased for your Flan's gift. Ah, my business partner. Tell me about what you do here. I trade our trade post resources. Foreign lands can provide us with rare exotic goods. I always enjoy the dance of trade. Enough for today? Always a pleasure. Have a look, Sunan. Sure, it's a pleasure to see you. What is it you do here again? If it's weapons or armor enhanced or adorned you'll be needing, that's what I'm here for. What have you got for me today? You'll be needing nothing else. I must be on my way now. Goodbye. Go, my eyes.
होता है आई हैव दोस इफ यू वॉन्ट दम ए सोलिड परचेस इज दिस द वन यू वॉन्ट I don't have an eye for these sorts of things. I can use this. That all you need? I'll see you later, friend. Barith, Flon's gift is on its way to Meath. Very good. I, I was just preparing to leave for the coronation, though I now have a problem on my hands. What is it? Flon's poetess, Kira. She was here delivering a formal invitation, and now I do not know where she's gone. Do you think she's in trouble? No, I think she is amusing herself somewhere, likely perusing Dublin's markets. We need her. The high poetess is an important member of the king's court. There cannot be a coronation without one. I will find her. Where should we meet? By Dublin's gates. I will ready the horses. Do you see? For the sake of our ears, shut your mouth. Sure, and you're an idiot. You are all the same. <clears throat> Grab the bitch. Fay, won't you let a caged bird sing? Shit. I'd hoped an audience of tone deaf Danes might permit. Are you Kira? Hold her down. Wonder of wonders, how much trouble can I be in at once? Can't help you. This one comes with me. No, no, no. She will answer for this insult. Can't change your mind. <laughs> you owe me. I've an iron Die! stomach and a powerful chest. <laughs> no.
Looks like our Portis has made friends with the ground. On your feet, Portis. Mulian, everything is spinning. A cold bath will remedy this quickly. To flush the ale from you. If you think I'm going to lock you to Tara, you're mistaken. Tara? Wait, who are you? Barret sent me to collect you. He's waiting at the stables. Ah, an envoy. Tell me, how much coin would an envoy be wanting to speak nothing of this brawl to Barret? He'll tie a guard to my hip the next time I'm in Dublin. A man can be so sensitive sometimes, do you know what I mean? I do. Barith is my family. <clears throat> well then, I think my mouth has gotten me in enough trouble today. Try opening it less. Works for me. Shall we? Barith has never spoken of you. What name do you bear? Eivor. I hail from Norway, now settled in England with the rest of my clan. A clan, eh? Are they all fist thumpers like you? It is because of these fists you live to sing another day, poetess. So true. Barith. I was beginning to worry. What took? There was... trouble. Ara, no need to be so tense. Shall we ride for Tara? We don't want to be late for the coronation. After you. Hello, friend. Come see my wares. May I see your stores? Can I tempt you with something else? Have you... I have... Trying to hurt me? Hey! A member of your family, Boris. Eivor tells me she's come from England. Yes, Eivor is helping to establish trade in Dublin. Secure valuable resources with faraway lands. In time, Dublin will become the heart of Ireland's trade, one that each and every kingdom can benefit from. That will no doubt please the future High King. Yes, well, above trade, I am hoping Flan can see Dublin as a friend and ally. You and many others. A relationship with Barith would be one worth fostering. It would be foolish of your king to ignore it. It appears Eivor is not abreast with our kingly history, Barith. We were hoping to have a meeting with Flan. My wish is to strengthen our ties. Can you see it done? Perhaps. We will see how the evening goes. I need your eyes, my friend.
quite the event, hmm? Spared no expense, that much is clear. Ara, my lady, one of the priests has gone missing. A violent mess is left of his tent. I fear something terrible has happened. Missing? Are you sure? Could be nothing. Could mean danger. Where's Flon? He's not yet arrived. That gives us some time. Kira, act as if nothing were amiss. Bareth and I will look into it. Where is this tent? Up the hill, to the left. Be careful. There was a fight here. It is the eve of the coronation, and already trouble brews. Keep your wits and stay close. We do not know anything yet. Something dark happened here. We must follow the blood. A succulent roast. Let us go back and follow another trail. Animal carcasses. We'll go back and follow another trail. leads off away from the main camp. Perhaps towards yeah. those tents? The blood stops here. Where do these cart tracks lead? This story is like to have a poor ending. I fear so, cousin. On such a momentous day as well. Flon's coronation may not be as hoped. Be my eyes, Sunan. There. Okay. Hey, boy. Let's continue. There. A cart up ahead. Looks like they hit a snack. Recognize him? That is Senan, the priest. Bastard stripped him of his clothes. That camp up there. What is it? Anachdu is no camp, though it appears someone has made it into one. Let's go. What do you think? The priest was kidnapped. They took his clothes. I believe whoever did this means to wear them. A disguise? We will soon find out. Yeah. 
wants it, die! Bleed you! Give up, you shit! Search him. Sent to kill Flon. The letter is unsigned. An unknown enemy. Come. We must bring news of this to Kira. I'm with you. You handled yourself well, Eivor. I have to say, you really are no stranger to these sorts of encounters. You did not do so bad yourself. Aye, we stopped the death of a king this day. If only we knew who was behind it. No idea who would go to such lengths. You can take your pick of the Northern E Nail Kings, though it is the kings of Ulster who particularly dislike Flon. Different king. Same story. Show me what lies ahead. Any story? The priest is dead, and so too are his killers, bandits. I found this. It's an order to kill Flon. One of them was to disguise himself as a priest. Cut Flon's throat during the coronation. Right under our noses. Why take the risk? Why not poison? Or striking at him in his sleep? Poison can fail. And to kill him in his sleep lacks spectacle. But your point is sound. The killer would not have made it out alive. He was ready to die. Whoever plotted this is intent on seeing Flon fall. We need to warn him. After the coronation, I will not have this gnawing at him. Flon earned this. He will enjoy it. Meet him afterward at his quarters in Duro. He will make time for you there. Now, if you will take my excuses, I need to tidy up. Come along, Eivor.
The water was not that murky, was it? You don't know much about the role of a poetess, do you, Eivor? Enlighten me. I will. Well, what are you waiting for? I asked to be excused. That meant you as well. I see other kings here. News of Flan's inauguration has reached far and wide. Come, we should join them. Is that him, Flan? Yes. What are they doing? Blessing him. Abbot Owen is the highest ranking official among the Christians. His blessing asserts that Flan is ready to fill the boots of his predecessor. It is all done before the Leah Fall, a sacred stone that is said to endow the rightful kings with long reigns. Does it work? Depends on what you consider long. Coronations are long. Where is the food? You have not changed. I am here. I may as well enjoy myself. Flan for it in ye cheek hooker to all jack doors. Do not for great for bunyard. Nor bun your And with that, Flan's enemies multiply. This warring of dynasties runs deep. If he's a smart king, he'll be eager allies. Smart he is, but also impassioned. His plan to subdue the North is not driven by power so much as it is bloodlust. Back there on our ride from Dublin, Kira made it seem there was more to you and Flan. What am I missing? A uh, detail. A large detail. You see, the northern king who crowned me, Ed Findlia, he murdered Flan's father and took his place as high king. Then, as is custom, he married Flan's mother. Safe to say there is no love lost between you. None. To Flan, Ed was a venomous snake, and so too are the ones he favored. Winning his trust will be no simple task. We just thwarted an attempt on his life. That should at least perk his ears up. Let us hope. I will leave immediately for Duro. Meet me there as soon as you can. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Ich bin ein Mann, 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 ich bin ein Mann